Uh, he was quiet. He was reasonably hardworking. Um, he had some issues, particularly when he got to sort of the key points in adolescence, which in secondary school are around year nine, so when he was sort of 14, 15. Um, and he had a few sort of spats around issues to do with bullying and girls and the, and the normal stuff. But he, we worked with him. He had some support, some mentoring. Um, QK was a school that had lots of support at its disposal, so we gave him what we thought that he needed, and he appeared to settle down. And by the time he got into the sixth form, he was working really hard. He got his uh, A-levels and went on to university, and it was the university that he wanted to go to. Do you think he was radicalised at school? No. I, I, hand on heart, I would say no. I think if there were changes, um, they happened later. Uh, certainly if there was anything going on while he was in school, the school had no knowledge or idea that that was what was happening, if it was happening. It seems that the government are going to look into what was going on in the school with radicalisation. How difficult is it for schools to deal with the issue of radicalisation? Well, schools can only deal with what they know. Um, my view would be that if schools had an inkling that something was going on, something untoward was going on, that not only would they hopefully have the resources to try and deal with it, but that they, they would also rely on a sort of multi-agency approach. And certainly whenever we had concerns which may have related to gangs or, or something which could also involve other agencies, then we would initiate a multi-agency uh, meeting and, and take a strategic view as to how we could all work together to support young people. And, and I would advocate that if schools are aware of anything going on along those lines, that's what they should absolutely do. The reports that he was involved in gangs, was he that sort of pupil? To my knowledge, I would say that was, that certainly wasn't the Mohammed Mwazi that, that I knew. I have read some of those reports in some of the, the, the press, but as I say, that wasn't my knowledge of him. And when you see the pictures of him as Jihadi John mm. and know what <coughs> he has done, what goes through your mind? It's just horror. I, I, I can't express strongly enough how shocking it is for me. E even now when I hear his name mentioned, I, it, it actually sort of irks me just to hear the name. And, you know, I, one of the things that I prided myself on as a head teacher of a school with well over 1,300 students was that I knew everybody. I knew all the kids. I went out of my way to make sure that I knew all the kids. So my dealings with Mohammed, my conversations with Mohammed, um, had absolutely no, bear no relation to that picture that I see in the, in the press and on, and on the news. Um, it's sickening, it's absolutely sickening to think that whatever void there was in his life, in his understanding of the world, it was filled by something so terrible that has led to him becoming this person. Did he have good family support? His, he had a good family. He, he had quite a few siblings. He was the oldest, so he took some responsibility. His dad was very hard working. They, uh, he was reasonably successful. Um, so they were they were a, a, a good family. They you know they they certainly were supportive of their son's aspirations. And three pupils at the school that are thought to have gone off to fight mm. in Somalia or Syria. Mm. I mean, does that suggest there was a problem at the school? No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think the fact that the school, where the school is geographically located, we are we had a seventy percent Muslim intake. We served some of the largest, most disadvantaged estates in the country. And for whatever reason, there were large numbers of, of, um, of Muslim families that we were working with. So in terms of statistics and numbers, I don't think that one should be unduly concerned about that. And I know that the school was the most incredible place. We had uh, huge numbers of support. We had wonderful members of staff. The kids were incredible. And as a result of which, we got two outstanding Ofsteds. Everybody that ever came to the school commented on its atmosphere, its ethos the level of tolerance and harmony that existed. Um, so I would say that anything that happened, I believe, would have come later. Um, and as I say, my view is that, that, that radicalization, the whole concept of radicalization is so complex. It's an interplay of numerous different facets that, that come, that focus on an individual, and that individual's response to those factors is determined by their own makeup and their own experience. I think to try and pin it down to saying there must have been something in the school is, is ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous, and completely denies the, the wonderful work that was done in that school by, by kids and by adults.